So we know that they are 150 uh, kilometers apart. A is going east at 35 kilometers an hour, and B is going north at 25 kilometers an hour. How fast is the distance between them changing, blah, blah, blah. OK, I have an expression for the distance. I can take the square root from both sides or not. So what am I asked to find, really? So something that I need to find. Yes, when time is blah, blah, blah. But what am I asked to find? W? Nope. One more time. Let's read it again. This is very important. How fast is the distance changing? Exactly. So I'm asked to find dw over dt. That's the question. Yes, when time is four hours, blah, 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 but I can't plug that in. I can't use it anywhere yet. Excellent. Good. So I have an expression that includes w, in this case w squared. How do I find dw over dt? How many variables I have in this problem? Are they variables or functions of something? They are all functions of? Exactly, they are all functions of time. x is a distance, depends on time. y is a distance, depends on time. w is a distance, depends on time. So all these three functions, x, w, and um, y are all functions of time. They're not variables. Good. So then how do I, what do I do here to get dw over dt? It is more difficult to differentiate a square root than to use implicit differentiation in this case. Although I can solve for w, I can, but it's more difficult to differentiate a square root, then simply do what? What? Good. So let's differentiate the left hand side. Yes? Yes? No, x is a function. Times the inner function prime. You didn't, you didn't differentiate the inner function prime. So it is 2. It is 150 minus x times the inner function prime. Negative 1. Very good. Thank you. Times? x is not a variable. Exactly. So now that first portion is differentiated. Now plus, I'm here, plus. 2y. Thank you very much. Equals. Exactly. So we were asked one more time to find the rate of change of the distance with respect, or the rate of change of the distance that, be, that uh, between the two ships at blah, blah, blah. I created an expression or an equation that I can differentiate. I did. Now I have to solve for dw over dt and then plug in what? Why 4? Because they start at noon. And the rate of change is given in kilometers per hour. All I have to do at the end is just plug in time equals 4. Or determine what I need for time equals 4. OK. Good. So now I'm solving for dw over dt. I see that all of them have 2. I will simplify both sides by 2. And I will divide both sides by w to get w over dt, dw over dt. And I have, I'm going to 
uh, distribute negative 1 so I don't have too many parentheses. So x minus 150 times dx over dt plus y dy over dt. Now I'm ready to plug in 4. Let's see where and how and what I do. I'm almost done, right? I created the equation. I have an expression for the derivative. Now I'm ready to plug in numbers and give a number. What is the rate of change of the distance uh, at that particular instant? OK. How do I get x? Say it again. So what is coming back here? What does this represent? It's a rate of change. It cannot be x. I cannot tell you that I drive at, at 35 kilometers. That would be wrong. Yes, so that cannot be the distance. What is 35 kilometers per hour? Dx over Thank you, Charlie. Excellent. What is 25 kilometers an hour? Dy of course. So 35 kilometers per hour is this piece. And 25 kilometers per hour is this piece. But now how do I get the rest? Obviously, for w, I have no choice now. What should I do to both sides here to get w? And allow me to write the equation one more time, because I put the prime in there, and I don't want you to get confused. So 150 minus x squared plus y squared equals w squared. How do I get this? What should I do to both sides to get this? How do I solve this equation for w? Okay. Of course. So then w equals the square root 150 minus x squared plus y squared. Very good. But my question is still, how do I get x? How do I get y? Once I have x and y, I have this, and problem is solved. So I'm coming back to my graph. How do I get this? I know that dx over dt is 25. And I know that the time is what? Four hours. How do I get x? What do I know about the relationship between time? Exactly. So x is nothing else. But 25 kilo, uh, it was 35, right? 35 kilometers per hour multiplied by 4 hours. And what do I get? Uh, one, so it's uh, 35 times 4, right? So times 2 is 70, 140 kilometers. How do I get y? Well, 25 kilometers per hour times 4 hours, that's 100 kilometers. And now I'm going to plug them in to get w because I need it here. So then w equals the square root of 150 minus 140 squared and plus 100 squared. So then w equals uh, 10 squared, 100 plus 100 squared. I really don't need to proceed because I will plug it in and put it, everything in the calculator. So dw over dt when t equals 4 hours is um, 140 minus 150, negative 10, multiply by 35, y is 100, multiply by 25, and this is the square root of 100 plus 100 squared. Don't bother with any calculations. Let's put in the calculator and let's see what happens. Okay, so the numerator in parentheses, negative 10 times 35, and then plus uh, 2500 divided by the square root. And you know me, I have to put parentheses 100 plus 100 squared.
and that's it. So 21.4 approximately. So this is approximately 21.4. What is the measurement unit? It's a rate of change. Yes. So at the instant, so they start at noon. Four hours later, this distance changes at 21.4 kilometers an hour. Say it again. Transportation, um, computer science, physics, mechanics. Very good. Next. Particle is moving along the... Uh, any questions? I'm sorry, forgive me. Any questions? Any questions? So one more time, what have we learned? Maybe I should put this in writing. So strategy for solving related rates problems. For related rates problems. One, read carefully. the problem carefully. Number two, draw something. Yes, very good. Three, when you draw the diagram, put in there whatever you have. Like I had a distance of 150 and how they were moving. Of course, you also have to create what we are asked to determine, the rate of change of whatever we are asked to determine, like I did in the problem. I used the right triangle because I had no other way. Luckily, this was going north and this was going east, and I didn't have to worry about other angles here, right? So I, this was what I was interested in. I formed the right triangle. I named this Y. I cannot name this X. Because I don't have the rate of change of this. I have the rate of change of this. As the fast as fast as the ship is going. A. Right? So um, then I realized that this was 150 minus x. I had a right triangle and I used an equation. Okay? So draw a diagram. Um, establish or write an equation that you will eventually use to find the derivative. Four, find the rate of change that we are asked. The rate of change. Why did I put the D? I don't know. The rate of change that you are asked to find. And what is the final step? Only at the very end, what? Plug in numbers. Only at the very end, plug in numbers. Okay, so let's illustrate with the next problem. A particle is moving along the curve y equals the square root of x. So when I read this, I have in mind the square root of x when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So I already have this in mind. Okay. As the particle passes through the point 4, comma 2, careful, be very suspicious of any number in the problem. So, okay, so this is the point 4, comma 2. Okay. Be very suspicious of any problem, any number given in the problem, numerical value. As the particle passes to the point 4, 2, its x coordinate increases at a rate of 3 centimeters per second. So what does that mean at this point? What happens at this point exactly right here? I'm going to call it P. So at P, what do I know? That the x 
coordinate increases at a rate of 3 centimeters per second. Give it a shot. You call me and you ask me how fast are you driving and I'm going to say 40 miles an hour. So at this point the rate of change of the x coordinate is 3 centimeters per second. What is given in this problem right now? What do I write? 3 centimeters per second is what? Yes, very good, Tony, indeed. dx over dt, of course. So its x-coordinate increases at the rate of 3 centimeters per second. How fast is the distance from the particle to the origin changing at this instant? How fast is the distance from the particle to the origin changing at this instant? Okay, so I have to disregard 4 comma 2. I have to say that the particle is somewhere on the curve. And I have to create the segment that connects the particle to the origin. So I'm going to say this is the point Q. X comma what? There is no ambiguity there. X y. comma. Which is? Yes, which is what is what is our x f of x? What is our f of x? Of course, thank you. So our point Q is where the particle is at any point in time, and I will absolutely form a right triangle. I'm going to call this distance W again. What is this? That's why I identified the coordinates of Q. So you can tell me what this is. Very good. And now you have to tell me, of course, what this is. No? Very good. It's not incorrect, but I really needed that. Good. Perfect. So then, again, I'm asked to determine how fast is this distance changing. So then uh, I need an equation for that. I need an equation that uses W somehow. Can you tell me what to write? It's the same idea. It's the same Pythagorean theorem and I just have to write it. Yes? Plus. Right, which is? Thanks. Very good. Equals. Excellent. Very good. That's all I needed. So one more time, I cannot make use of that point. Because if I plug in constants, when I differentiate, yeah, the answer will always be zero. So I have to say, okay, the particle moves along this curve. And a particular this uh, instant, the distance is this w. At the very end, I will use the numerical portion of the problem. Good. What will I do now? Say it again. Very good. The left hand side. Now let's identify a few things. How many variables we have in this equation? Are they functions or variables? No. How many letters, I should say, to are they functions or variables? Functions. Yes. Good. So according to that, keeping that in mind, what will you tell me to write? Very good. Plus. Plus. Very good equals two W very good this is what we are after how fast 
is the distance changing when the particle passes through blah blah blah. So let's solve for dw over dt. So dw over dt equals 2x dx over dt plus dx over dt over 2w. Now I need to replace w by the square root of this because I have w, I have w squared. And then I can plug in numbers. So 2x dx over dt plus dx over dt over 2, the square root of x squared plus x. And now I'm ready to plug in numbers. So let's read the question one more time. I took the square root from both sides to put w in here. x squared plus x equals w squared. You take the square root from both sides to get w. Better? Let's read the problem one more time. A particle is moving along this curve. As the particle passes through the point 4, 2, its x coordinate increases at the rate of 3 centimeters per second. How fast is the distance from the uh, particle to the origin changing at this instant? So now I'm ready to write what? 2. How much is x? How much is x? Yes. How much is dx over dt? Good. 3. Plus, how much is dx over dt? Good. How much is x again? So 16 plus 4. Don't bother with anything. So parentheses for the top. So 2 times 4 times 3 plus 3 close divide by. Don't forget parentheses or you divide by 2 and then you further divide one more time by the square root of 20. press enter. 3.02 approximately. Not good enough. What is the measurement unit? Excellent, indeed. So here's the idea here. As the particle is moving, moving um, on this curve, at the instant the particle passes to 4, 2, the rate of change of distance between the particle and the origin changes. At that instant, changes at 3.02 centimeters per second. I could not have made use, use of 4 and 2. I could not make use of 3 or dx over dt. I have to create a function that represents w I have or an equation. I have to differentiate it. And at the very end, I said, OK, where is this now? Well, when x is 4, when dx is 3, and dx over dt is 3, and so on and so forth. Do not trust the numbers unless, unless we are told this particular thing does not change. OK? But 4, 2, the particle does not sit there. It goes along the curve, and we, are, we, we cannot just determine the distance between 0, the origin, and 4, 2, because that would be a constant. So I have to let the, cur the, the particle move along this curve at a particular instant, unknown instant, at a particular instant create that equation or function for w, and then differentiate, and then plug in the numbers. Because if you, if you start with this, the distance between uh, the origin and uh, 4, 2 will be a number. And then you would differentiate, and the number is 0. Prime, right? It's 0. OK, any questions on this? Any questions? OK, next. A spherical gas balloon is being inflated at a rate of 2 
100 cubic feet per minute. So that's our problem four. Spherical gas balloon is being inflated at a rate of 200 cubic feet per minute. What is this? Can move on before I identify what is given here. The rate of change with respect to? Excellent. So how do I write that? Excellent. Thank you, Charlie. Of course. This is what is given in our problem in the very first sentence. We are told when I put air in this balloon, the volume changes, increases at a rate of 200 cubic feet per minute. Excellent. Neglecting compression of the gas. How fast is the radius increasing when the radius is 5? Which is the number that I cannot use till the very, very end? Five. Exactly. I cannot make use of that. That has to wait. Okay. So I know that the rate of change of volume with respect to time is this. And I'm asked, how fast is the radius increasing when the radius is 5? What am I asked to find? When the radius is 5 feet. What am I asked to find? Excellent. Thank you, Ian. Perfect. Excellent. Good. Where is my starting point? My only starting point, my only possibility, is to start with what? With a dot 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 of a sphere. What? With a Okay, let's read the problem one more time. A spare gas balloon is being inflated at a rate of 200 cubic feet per minute. We established what that was. How fast is the radius increasing when the radius is 5? So where is my starting point? The dot 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 of a sphere. I don't have a formula for the rate. Exactly. That's all I have. I cannot use this. That's the only thing I have. Good. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Good. What do you think we have to do? Knowing what I'm given, knowing what I'm given, I'm going to ask you now how many unknowns I have in this. The volume and the radius. Are they unknowns or are they functions? Or one is an unknown and one is a function. Nope. Look at this. And look at this. What does this say about V and R? That they must be what? Functions of time. Good. Very good. So I have this equation. V equals 4 thirds pi R cubed. What should I do to it? I'm asked to find the r over dt. So what should I do to it? Good. I'm ready. The left hand side. Very good. Over dt. The right hand side. Okay. 
So when I bring 3, it cancels the denominator, so it's 4 pi. What else? Good. Times. I'm after this. What should I do? Of course. And it's done. So dr of a dt is nothing else but dv over dt, everything divided by 4 pi r squared. And now I'm ready to say r is, to evaluate this when r is 5 feet. Good. That's it. Nothing else. So dv over dt was given to us to be 200. 4 pi is 4 pi. And 5 squared is 25. You can simplify. However, I will still put it in the calculator. It's 200. Careful with the denominator. Now the denominator has to be in parentheses. Uh, 4 pi, 4. Here's pi. Multiply by 25. So, 0.64 approximately. Measure my unit, please. The rate of change of distance with respect to time. A radius, the radius is a distance. Per minute. Why per minute? Because this was given per minute. So what will you say? So pumping air into this balloon, when the volume changes at constant change, that is a constant change. I, we did not have anything to do with that. So the constant change of volume was 200 cubic feet per, per minute. At a particular instant, so imagine the balloon increasing its volume, increasing, increasing, and you say, okay, when the radius is exactly 5, how fast is the radius changes? How fast is the radius, radius changing at that time? And that's 0.64 feet per minute. Um, let's move on. Any questions? Not too bad, right? Okay. Um, a canonical icicle. So it's a inverted cone. Okay? Inverted cone. It's melting at a rate of 4 cubic inches per minute. So what is that? So this is problem 5. So we have 4 cubic inches per minute. What is this? Yes, Tony? Are we going to have to be responsible for knowing all of these formulas for volume and stuff based on... Uh, at least the sphere and the cone and the cylinder, yes. At least that. Okay. And the cube, yeah. Okay. Please. So, um, I can write here the volume of a cylinder. It's the area of the base times the height, and the area of the base is pi r squared. And the volume of a cone is one-third of the volume of a cylinder. So these two are not difficult to remember. So remember, imagine a cylinder. This is a cylinder. It's a cylinder. Area of the base times the height. It's a circle, pi r squared times the height. And the volume of a cone is one third of that. So, what is given in this problem? What is four cubic inches per minute? So what do I write? Say it again. It's cubic inches. I cannot write s. If it's cubic, it has to be volume. If it's squared, it has to be area. Exactly. dv over dt is given in the problem. Let's continue. 
if the length of the icicle remains six times its diameter as it melts. Find the rate of decrease of its length when it is 12 inches long. Sounds complicated. Let's read again. If the length of the icicle, this is the length, so L equals 6 times its diameter. So at any point in time, it is melting, but somehow the length is 6 times the diameter at all times. This I have to use in the problem. This is not something that comes into play at the very end. This is a constant situation. This is in place at any point in time, at any instant. Okay. If the length of the icicle remains six times its diameter as it melts, constant to all the time, find the rate of decrease of its length when it is 12 inches long. When the length is 12 inches. But what? What am I asked to find? Say it again. Okay, let's read again. Find the rate of decrease of its length. Exactly, excellent. BL over DT is what we're asked to do, to find. Excellent. Good. So let's establish, let's read the problem one more time, let's establish what we have, let's think of what's happening here. So, the icicle is men melting at a rate of 4 cubic inch per minute. So dV over dt is 4 cubic inch per minute. If the length of the icicle, if the length, remains, it's, uh, um, remains 6 times its diameter at all times, Find the rate of decrease of its length when, specifically, is 12 inches long. Which part of the numerical information I cannot use till the very last step? Exactly. 12 inches, forget about it. As if it's not even in the problem. Good. So, where is my starting point? With the volume of the cone. So the volume of the cone is one-third pi r squared length or height. Pi r squared, pi r squared height is the volume of the cylinder. So the volume of the cone has one-third in front. Okay. What do I know? What do I know about the relationship here? So volume is OK to stay in the equation because I have this. L is OK to stay in the equation because that's what I'm interested in. But what has to go away? Somehow I have to get rid of. I cannot delete it, of course, right? But I have to find an expression for it. Oh. Exactly. R is no good, but I have a relationship. What do I know about the diameter? Exactly. So then I know that L equals 6 times 2 times R, or L equals 12R. How do I get rid of this piece, knowing this? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Are you coming back, Matt? Unfortunately, I can't. Oh, you had questions for me? Oh, okay. okay, sorry about that. Forgive me. Uh, he's from my next class. He probably had questions for me. I don't remember if he said anything. I'm sorry. Sorry, Matt. Okay, so what should I do now? Because I need to get rid of this. 
replacing with L R equals L over 12. So now the volume is pi divided by 3 times R squared. L squared over 12 squared multiplied by L. All the numbers will go together. So pi over 3 times 144, don't bother multiplying, times L cubed. What do I have to do next? Do I have functions in here? Do I have variables? Do I have a variable and a function? What are these, B and L? Diameter is twice the radius. 6 times 2 times r will be l. l equals 12 r. I divide both sides by 12 to get r. Is that OK? Good. So v and l, are they variables? Are they constants? Are they functions? If they're functions, functions of what? So they are functions of what? Four cubic inch per cubic inches per minute. What are they functions of? Of course. So what do I continue with? What should I do now? Very good. So let's differentiate both sides. The left hand side, please. Very good. Don't bother with the numbers. I just need to bring three and I'll simplify it. L squared times. Very good. What is my variable? What am I after here? So dl over dt is dv over dt over this whole thing. Pi over 144 times l squared. Now, yes, when l is 12 inches. And uh, what was the, uh, it was 4. So then the top is 4, the bottom is pi, 144 times 12 squared. Be careful how you put in the calculator, but I would rather, as you see, 144 and 12 go away, so it's 4 over pi. I divide 4 by pi, and I'm done. 4 divided by pi. And I get 1.3 approximately. What is this? 1.3 what? Yes? Yes. It's the rate of change of length with respect to time. So uh, since it is decreasing, it has to be a negative rate. Because, uh, okay, it's melting. So, because it's melting, I have to put negative from the very beginning. Because the rate of change will be negative. So, and since it is decreasing, so please put minus in here. It's melting. So, the volume is changing, but it's changing, it becomes smaller. Negative here, and negative here, and negative here. Of course, negative here, negative here, negative here, negative here, and negative 1.3. So the volume is decreasing, therefore the length will be decreasing, as the problem says. Find the rate of decrease. If it's a decrease, it has to be negative. Of its length when it is 12 inches long. Um, what I would like to do tomorrow is continue with these problems. If you have the time between now and tomorrow, 
please do these as many as you can, at least every other odd, whatever you can, so we can uh, work on these problems. I would like to work on um, these problems for at least another hour tomorrow on related rates problems. And then uh, section 3.10 will require a little bit of time. And then on Monday, I would like to review everything again. Oh, I'm only going to show you three formulas in 3.11. They're the uh, hyperbolic functions that we talked about it in chapter 2. I gave you a handout for hyperbolic functions. Hyperbolic sine, cosine, and tangent. And we're going to look at their derivatives. That's all.